congenital dislocation of the hip has an incidence of about one per thousand throughout much of the world. Yet, in China, Hong Kong, Thailand, and India, CDH is virtually unknown, as it is in the tropical regions of Africa. On the other hand, it is common among the nomad Laplanders of northern Norway and Sweden, and among the people of northern Italy and southern Germany, as it is among the Navajo and Apache Indians of the southwestern states, and among the Indians of northern Manitoba and Saskatchewan. We have been studying the high incidence of CDH among Indians in northern Saskatchewan. Near Loon Lake, at the Ministiquan Indian Reserve, there is a prevalence of 35 per thousand. At Pocketawagan, just over the border in Manitoba, the prevalence is 17.7 per thousand. At Montreal Lake, 15.4. At Isla La Crosse, 11.1. At La Loche, 9.4. And at La Ronge, 9.7 per thousand. In contrast, at Red Earth, there is only one case among 600 people comparable to the incidence in whites of one per thousand. This will be of special interest later. There are many Indians in northern Saskatchewan with untreated CDH, such as this lady, 53 years of age. The fact that the majority have had no treatment allows us an unrivaled opportunity to study the natural history of the untreated disease in all age groups. They have a cosmetic deformity, a limp, but the majority are surprisingly free from pain throughout life and rarely develop painful osteoarthritis. Her radiograph shows a bilateral, complete dislocation. She has a somewhat uneven, waddling gait, listing to the right. She can squat in a somewhat awkward way. These people have little restriction of their activities, can walk long distances, and get around very well. This 87-year-old Indian lady also has a limp, but at her age it should be quite permissible to use a cane. Bilateral dislocation of the hips. For her age, she gets along fairly well. Although the dislocation is bilateral, she has a bit of a list to the right. Both of these Indian girls have untreated CDH. The girl in the red slacks, age 19, has an untreated bilateral dislocation, as you see here. I think you would be hard-pressed on casual observation to say that her gait is abnormal at all. Her sister in the yellow slacks, age 14, has a unilateral dislocation of the left hip. Neither of these girls has any pain or discomfort or restriction of activity. Here you see the dislocated left hip and minor subluxation of the right hip of the girl in the yellow slacks. As she walks away, you see there is a little asymmetry of her pelvis, but only slight abnormality of her gait, even though she has had no treatment. This 18-year-old Indian girl has a subluxation of the left hip that is the result of late treatment. The subluxation is demonstrated here on her left. The treatment was too late to be fully successful, and in effect, it converted a dislocation to a subluxation that likely will result in painful osteoarthritis in years to come. She can squat, but note the asymmetry of the wear on the heels of her shoes. This 18-year-old Chippewan Indian girl was treated very late for CDH and ended up with an arthrodesis. You can see the Smith-Peterson nail across the joint. The immobile joint is free of pain, but her movements are very restricted. This is serious. In a primitive community particularly, people must be able to squat on the floor of the tent or in a canoe, and they must squat to defecate. 
she cannot squat. Thus, early diagnosis and treatment of CDH are very important and the results of late treatment may be very bad. Every infant in the newborn nursery should be examined in this manner. The hips of this normal Indian infant abduct and externally rotate fully with no abnormal click or abnormal movement. Here we have a little Indian child of 15 months with a dislocated left hip. These Indian children are always cute and usually they are good natured. There is a slight tightness and restriction of movement of the right hip but marked restriction and abnormal movement of the left hip. On the left you can see a jerk, the ortholanic click. The cine radiograph shows first the normal right hip with normal abduction and external rotation. Whereas on the left side with this movement you can see and feel and almost hear the click as the femoral head slides in and out of the joint. Of course, this is positive proof of CDH, and this cine radiograph is the visual record of what you can feel during the clinical examination. The Ortolani click. Here is another Indian girl, 15 months of age. It is much better if the diagnosis is made before this age, before the limp becomes apparent when they learn to walk. Note the asymmetry of the skin folds. A word of warning, asymmetric skin folds can also occur in normal children and need not be present in CDH. The asymmetric folds are well shown here. The left thigh, as you can see, is unusually short. It is an extreme example of the shortening that may occur in CDH. This shortness of the left femur is well demonstrated in the skyline view. And the left heel is also higher than the right. This is not how we hold a child in a real examination. This was done for purposes of photography. You can see that there is not in this child a true click, only a little asymmetry of motion of the left femoral head. It does not go back into the joint and so you do not get an ortolani click. With pushing and pulling on the right side, there is normal stability due to the normal acetabulum demonstrated here on cinefilm. But on the left side, there is some telescoping of the dislocated head, which is not seated in a normal acetabulum. This slight telescoping is shown nicely here. The dislocated left trochanter can be palpated in an abnormal position, high and laterally. Anteriorly, when you rotate the leg, you do not feel the head beneath the femoral artery as you do on the normal right side. This Indian child is being examined correctly and there is no ortolani click here either. On the normal left side, movements are normal as shown here on cinefilm. An exception to the usual finding, the dislocated the right side as we will see here, can be abducted and externally rotated a normal amount even though CDH is present. Thus, an absent ortolani click by no means excludes CDH. Here is an older Indian girl, now five years of age, with bilateral CDH which was treated at about one year of age. This flattened femoral head is obviously much too big for the acetabulum as the result of aseptic necrosis of the femoral head. This is a well-recognized complication of forceful closed reduction and in her case was bilateral. Painful osteoarthritis in later life is virtually assured. There is loss of the normal smooth motion of the hips.
Note the flat and poorly developed femoral head and loss of congruity of the joint surfaces. Aseptic necrosis occurs from interference to the blood supply from forceful late reduction and is a serious problem when it occurs. We find a higher incidence of joint laxity among Indians and a higher incidence among Indian patients with CDH than in control patients. This Indian girl with CDH can put her thumb right down in her forearm without difficulty. Her fingers can be hyperextended until they are almost parallel to her forearm. The elbow hyperextends more than 10 degrees. And there is some hyperextension of the knee, although it is not too well demonstrated with her slacks on. An environmental etiologic factor of considerable interest is the Indian practice of swaddling. On the red earth, these children are cared for during the first year of their lives. The mother babies in their cradle boards are tikkanogans. The boards are brightly colorful, and the embroidery often exquisite. The large handles aid in carrying or rocking them and also serve as a framework over which to drape mosquito netting or a flannelette sheet for protection from the sun. When the mother walks through the bush, a cloth diaper draped over the handle prevents the baby's face from being slapped by branches. In winter, a loose blanket